I think one of the first things I want to mention this evening on our broadcast is the uh, the uh, sculptor Sergei Tarasjenko, who uh, had made this was a model of a full sized life sized horse sculpture in Richmond, British Columbia, Minoru, the horse named Minoru, Minoru Park. And uh, Sergei died suddenly recently of a blood clot that broke loose in his leg. He was uh, just 50 years old. It was quite a tragedy. We were sorry, very sorry about it. But uh, tonight I have two subjects revisited and then I promise we'll go on with the Old Testament is about you and a few other subjects from, uh, from the New Testament. I had uh, done a broadcast once on the Nicolaitans, or really Neo-Nicolaitanism, and I notice there's still a lot of Protestant speculations about who the Nicolaitans will be, uh, who are mentioned in the book of Revelation. Obviously they don't know the Nicolaitans already have been. They were one of the first of the ancient Gnostic heresies. And uh, they were strongest in the diocese of Ephesus, which in the end was governed by the Apostle John. And um, it spread down all the way down into Egypt. So it's another example of why one has to take with a grain of salt any kind of Protestant interpretations of Scripture and the interpretations of the book of Revelation in particular. We'll talk again about the Nicolaitan heresy a little later because it was an important heresy and it's mentioned quite a bit in the book of Revelation, so we'll talk about it later on. The first thing I wanted to do, though, was to respond to a question which somebody had posed, and I think it was a sophistic question. I think it was contrived uh, in, a, in, a malicious, in a mischievous way. I won't go so far as to say malicious, but a mischievous way. I was asked um, on the basis of my uh, speech at the Orthodox Psychotherapy Conference in Chicago uh, a week ago, where I mentioned that the uh, book of Revelation was not scientifically accurate. I mean, the, excuse me, <laughs> the uh, creation narrative in the book of Genesis was not scientifically accurate because it was not a scientific document. It wasn't intended to be a scientific piece. So this gentleman wrote to me and asked, uh, well, what contradiction is there between science and the uh, Genesis, the book of Genesis itself? And I have to reply, as I have before, it depends on how you interpret the book of Genesis. People don't just read any of these books, they interpret them according to one system or another, one model of reality or one ideology or from fear or whatever. In one way or another, they're all interpreted. And I know we have a group of Orthodox Christians who, by osmosis, have been sucked into Protestant fundamentalism. And uh, most of them are also usually part of the Toll House cult, but anyway, they've uh, been sucked into this and have taken up the cudgels uh, of um, Protestant fundamentalism. And so this is probably what the basis of his question was. And I would say there, there's no contradiction because the book of Genesis is not about the scientific details of the creation of the universe. But if one takes it literally as a fundamentalist, then of course there are contradictions between very solid, well-proved science and whatever ideology it is with which their trans... Their, um, I think the name of this person is handled as Orthodox videos or something. If he's interpreting it in a fundamentalist or literalist way, then of course that's complete nonsense. Uh, not only is the Earth 4.5 billion years old, it was certainly not created in six calendar days, and in fact, uh, the creation in the universe is still ongoing. We still have new stars coming into being. There are star birthing grounds across the universe where new stars are formed. We also have older stars exploding, and uh, we have these supernovae, some of which are close to a million years old, 100,000 years old, thousands of years old, and we detect the uh, re remnants of them, the, the, the remains of them. So the universe is not static. 
I realized Aristotle uh, and uh, the scholastics and some fundamentalists think everything in the universe is exactly the way it was the day it came into being. But of course, we can see before our eyes that that's not true. So the creation of the universe, you can't say it was created in any particular length of time because the creation is still going on. So long as there are new stars being born and coming into existence, creation is still ongoing. And as long as there are still supernovae, as long as there are stars exploding and sending stardust and the various uh, elements out into space, the act of creation is still going on. And the, the, act of, the, the whole creation sequence is extremely complex. And there would have been absolutely no reason for it to have been being revealed to the ancients. And no one really needs to know it for their salvation or for their relationship with God in any case. Uh, it a great interest and a lot of money is being spent on it in the sciences, but it's not necessary knowledge. Consequently, uh, it wouldn't have been revealed in the Old Testament in any case. Remember that Moses came down from the Mount of to Mount of uh, Sinai with the Ten Commandments. He did not come down with the periodic table of the elements. There was no reason for God to reveal the periodic table of the, ele of the elements to the Hebrews, but to give them a rule by which they might live, and to reveal to us the condition and nature of man, and simply to tell us, give us the assurance that God had created all. But the creation is still ongoing, and will be ongoing until the second coming. There will always be new star formations and likely new galaxies being pulled together and formed. Um, the uh, Earth, the universe is expanding at a very rapid rate, and all kinds of changes are taking place in the universe. Aristotle was not right, and Aristotle is not uh, a father of the Church. As some of the ancient fathers, of course, did accept Aristotle and also accepted Ptolemy, the greatest geography of his era. but. Neither of these teachers were correct. And uh, consequently, yes, there will be a great conflict between science and the book of Genesis if one takes everything in the book of Genesis literally and as scientific as revelation of, of some kind of solid sound science. There's much in science that disproves the fundamentalist understanding of the book of Genesis. Uh, for example, we know that there were two distinct species of human beings who lived at the same time. Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons, modern, more modern humans, are not the same species. They appear to have interbred. We find some genetic evidence of that. But the reason we can find genetic evidence of it is because they were not the same species of, of, of human. Uh, they were close enough that they could be interbred, like mules and donkeys that make mule, uh, horses and donkeys that make mules. But anyway, this, uh, so if you're asking me, is there any contradiction between science and the book of Genesis, I have to repeat again. It depends on how you interpret the book of Genesis. If you're a fundamentalist, if you're a literalist, if you think that the book of Genesis is literally accurate, then yes, there's a contradiction. And if you, if you believe that way, though, I'll have to tell you you're wrong. And You'll respond by saying, well, just because you say so doesn't mean it. Okay, it's not me saying so. It's uh, two centuries of good, hard, solid science, well proved, well demonstrated, that uh, tells you you're wrong. And if you have to believe a falsehood in order to pretend that you're believing the truth, then believe your falsehood. But it's not correct. It's not true. Uh, and reality can never be served by falsehood and untruth. And at the same time, truth is not harmed by reality, and reality doesn't contradict truth. So what you believe and what you're advocating is false, if you're a fundamentalist or literalist.